classrooms and textbooks are no longer the basis or the necessary basis for most of what is going on in education today. Uh, we are fortunate that we have a variety of new instruments. Um, we think of computers, we think of uh, the web, we think of a development such as Wikipedia, um, we think of video games, and all of those give a complete new opening into the world of education, give incredibly strong instruments, but they need to be put to the right service and they need to be used effectively. And I think opera is completely different. Opera is something that goes about the singing. Uh, and as you may know, there are two art forms, singing and dancing, where we need nothing else as our body. And it's about that that I would like to talk in New York when I'm here for making opera. My interest is really the uh, forces in children that destroy creativity. Um, violence uh, in particular um, and violence that's uh, generated by systems that we create as adults and uh, uh, what we can do as adults to reverse the harm that we are actively doing to destroy a child's natural creative talents. My focus is really looking at how digital media and digital entertainment can be used in education and on all sorts of different levels, but especially in the area of emotional intelligence. Since last year, actually, we've been applying our digital entertainment expertise and we've been working with uh, Jane Goodall and with Majid in developing projects, uh, leveraging the expertise that we have in digital entertainment with their domain expertise to develop uh, projects that hopefully can become products. Dealing with children and making toys, I'm the one that probably thinks like a seven-year-old most of the day, and I think as we discuss a lot of these issues, we have to remember that we were once <laughs> children too, and how quickly we forget what it was like to be a child. As an educator, what I ask students is to, um, to tell me who they want to be as opposed to what they want to be. And I think that that um, evokes a lot, of, um, a lot of more creative work from them. And um, it lets me direct uh, their work in a more creative fashion. In teaching architecture and seeing what students uh, of architecture do after they graduate, uh, it's remarkable how few become architects. But many go on to be involved in different fields where their knowledge and appreciation of architecture uh, contributes to society in a variety of ways. There's a very interesting a study that we made with the OECD. It's a year and a half study uh, showing how the income from culture, uh, how much percentage, for example, New York or London generates in terms of revenues uh, related to culture. The UK has 6% of the revenue built on culture. Uh, L uh, New York is 3%. 42% of the employment of Paris is related to culture. So this is very, very interesting. So when cities, countries, and government understand the link of the well-being of what you construct and the impact of having people that are happy and that will contribute then better into their work, um, I think that that is an element that's very important. Given that this is a session on, in part, education, um, ADHD is probably one of the most commonly diagnosed, so-called diagnosed disorders which has a significant impact on educational outcomes and the, the usual symptoms of uh, intention, hyperactivity, etc. are usually treated by stimulant medication. It's generally seen as a, as a disorder. However, there is now increasing uh, findings and research to suggest that in fact when coupled with high IQ is also associated with high levels of creativity. Today Fulbright is at its highest level in history. That's good for academic mobility. Its objective is to have people study in a culture beyond their own and return home so that this brain gain rather than brain drain. The Scholar Rescue Fund, Louise, in the year between uh, these summits has added about 15 
more million dollars to its endowment to have a permanent source of funds that a scholar anywhere in the world threatened from any source can find safe haven and safety. Brains need safety. People who have multiple risk factors for vascular problems are more likely to get demented. For example, those who have obesity, sedentary lifestyle, diabetes, smoking, uh, are up to 16 times more likely to get Alzheimer's versus those who don't. And we need to educate people to be careful about their vascular risk factors, and I think that we need to start with children. You know, we're talking about the brain of children. This is the machinery we want to improve by uh, teaching them about art, teaching them about music, teaching them about technology, and so forth. But if the brain itself is not getting oxygen because children have developed obesity and have obstructive sleep apnea, then we have to first start with fixing the problem. The, there's an enormous explosion in the possibilities for informal learning. Uh, not just for children, but also for adults. Um, you know, uh, in 1970, if you turn on the radio and you hear that something, something terrible has happened in um, Albania, and you think, mm, Albania, I kind of know where that is, but uh, I really don't know much about the history or, or who are these people. And you might think, well, I should go to the library and look that up. But, well, I mean, who really had time to go to the library and look things up? Now you probably get home and you hop on the internet and you Google for Albania and you find a Wikipedia article or some other news articles and you can just sort of informally learn about things like that. When I was a medical student in the 60s, I learned, as everybody did then, that the, um, the brain, the mammalian brain, the human brain, is um, an immutable object that it's all the neurons it's ever going to contain are there at, uh, at birth. All we do is lose them during life. Everything's genetically determined and can't be altered. It can never be repaired. If it's damaged, no new neurons are, ma are made. Uh, all of those ideas, which were fundamental tenets of neuroscience, have been overthrown in the last 40 years, and we now see the, the plasticity of the nervous system, the capacity to change and modify in functionally valuable ways as a result of information flowing through the brain is an essential principle of how the brain works. I have the joy and good news to report um, the level of activity amongst teachers to share collective wisdom that everyone can benefit from all over the world, that our approach to our organization and to what we do is just as one would approach a fabulous classroom. Um, there is a guide, there are people who go off and do wonderful things, and I think the biggest issue that we're facing and dealing with is levels of uh, engagement, um, dignity of teachers, the, the notion that um, the people that they are uh, working with um, are capable and that that teacher is worth something. And my passions about education are two, two areas. Uh, one is um, how we can make math and science education less toxic. Um, I, kids uh, at young ages, uh, first and second grade, tend to love math and science. And by the time they get out of grammar school, they tend to hate it. And um, any girl with any interest in math, of course, has that beaten out of her, too, but um, that's a different issue. Um, the issue with <clears throat> math and science in general is that the teachers don't know it and don't like it, and that they take the most boring possible approach. Um. Something to, to focus on is how can education enhance more of our uh, uh, people's ability to um, express their empathic and understanding abilities. Uh, and it seems pretty obvious to me when I look around the United States that the understanding of other cultures is just abysmal, non-existent. Um, so I was, uh, been to I've been talking to several people here uh, about educational exchange programs, which seem important to me. Um, it, it's hard not to uh, feel empathic about people who you know. Present, what I call toxic childhood, is working against that. The, the um, nature deficit disorder, the uh, obsession with safety, and so on and so forth, has prevented children learning, for, being able to learn for themselves, to play in the way that, that Jane was telling us about chimpanzees. How many children now play out of doors?